Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to work with thirds. So basically, we're going to go through how to add them and subtract them, and then we're going to go through how to multiply and divide them. So I'm going to take you through those, and hopefully by the end of this video, you're a little bit more comfortable with thirds and how to work with them. Okay, let's have a look. So when it comes to addition and subtraction, you want to treat it the same way that you would treat an algebraic expression. So what that means is that you can only really add thirds if they have the same third, if that makes sense. Just the same way that you can only add algebraic expressions if they are like terms. So the same rule applies. So we'll take this first example over here. So this first term has a root five and this second term also has a root five. That makes them like terms and therefore you can add these thirds. So what you do is you add the coefficients. So the number in front of this third is a one and the number in front of this third is a two. So you add one with the two to get three and then you simply just put the third on the end and that's how you add thirds. We're gonna do the same thing with subtraction. So first you gotta make sure that they are like terms. So this one has a root two and this has a root two, so they're like terms. Then you can go ahead and add or subtract their coefficient. So the coefficient of this is one and the coefficient of this is negative eight. Therefore, one minus eight is minus seven and then you pop the third on the end. Now let's look at this next example. So root five plus root 45. So what happens when they don't have the same third? So the first thing you wanna do is try and simplify each third in the expression. So root five is in its simplest form. The square root of 45, however, can be simplified. So let's simplify the square root of 45. So to simplify a third, you wanna break it up into two factors with one of those factors being a perfect square. So 45 can be broken up into nine and into five. And root nine is three and root five is root five. So root 45 has been simplified to three root five. And then let's bring this root five down. Now they obviously have the same third, so now we can add them. So we add the coefficients, so one plus three gives us four, and then you just simply add the third onto the end. That's it. Let's look at this next example. So we're gonna make sure all the thirds have been simplified. So the square root of eight can obviously be simplified. So we're gonna break it up into root four and root two. And this root two just stays. Um, the square root of four is two, so this becomes two root two. And this just stays as root two. Now they have the same third, and so we can subtract their coefficients. So we do two minus one gives us one root two, and this is written as root two. Okay, we'll look at one more example where there are, I guess, more than two terms. So the same rules apply. So we're gonna start with the square root of 63. So 63 can be broken up into nine and seven. So we break it up into root nine and root seven. Um, 28 can be broken up into four and seven. And 50 can be broken up into 25 and two. Now let's simplify. So root nine is three, so this becomes three root seven. Root four is two, so this becomes two root seven. And root 25 is five, so that becomes five root two. Now, like we said previously, we can only add or subtract the thirds that have the same third. So these two terms have the same third, so we can subtract these. So we do three minus two, which gives us one root seven. This does not have the same third, so we cannot add or subtract that with anything else. So this, it just kind of remains where it is. And so this just becomes root seven minus five root two, okay? So that's how you add and subtract thirds. So when you multiply and divide thirds, you apply a different set of rules. And this is actually so much easier than adding or subtracting. And the reason is because you don't really need to worry about whether they are like terms or not. You simply multiply or you divide. It's as simple as that. So we'll take the first example. So what you wanna do is you just simply multiply the numbers that are underneath the third. So Seven times three is 21. So this becomes the square root of 21. It's really that simple. Root three times root five. So we're gonna multiply the three with the five to give us 15. So that becomes the square root of 15. So when you have rational and irrational parts, you multiply the rationals together and then you multiply the irrationals together. 
So the rational parts of this are negative four and three. So we're gonna multiply those together. So negative four times three is negative 12. So that's rational times irrational gives us a rational. And then the root five times root 11 gives us root 55. So that's the irrational part. So that's the only thing you have to do differently when you have rational parts. But apart from that, it follows the same rules. Now with division, same thing. So you're going to divide the rational parts together. So four divide two simplifies to two. So that's two at the top. And then the irrational parts. So you just simplify the numbers under the thirds. So two with 12 simplifies to six. So this becomes the square root of six. So once again, we're gonna simplify two with six. So that gives us three on the bottom. And then two with 20 to give us 10. So we're just left with one at the top. And then we're left with three root 10 at the bottom. We'll look at this final example here. So we're gonna simplify 15 and 10. So five goes into both of those numbers. So 15 reduces to three and 10 reduces to two. Now looking at the numbers underneath the thirds. So 18 and 10 can be simplified with two. So 18 reduces to nine and 10 reduces to five. So the top becomes three root nine and the bottom becomes two root five. Now, just before we move on, you just have to also be cautious to see if you can simplify anything, just like with anything that you do. So basically the square root of nine can obviously be simplified to three. So we can rewrite the top as three, right? The three at the front there. So three times the square root of nine, which is three. And the denominator cannot be simplified. And so the top becomes nine over two root five. And that's how you divide those two thirds. We'll look at two more questions that might come up in your HSC exam or in any preliminary exams. So the first one says that if two root three minus root five all squared equals a minus root b, then evaluate a and b. Okay, so this calls on your ability to expand perfect squares as well as um, your operation with thirds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this expression that we're given and we're going to expand. So with a perfect square, you square the first term, so two root three squared, and then you multiply these two terms together and you double it. So this basically becomes two because you're doubling it, and then you take the first term, two root three, and then the second term, minus root five, and then you square the last term there, so root five squared. Now, whenever you square something like this, what's important is that you square kind of each number. So first we're gonna square the two. So the square of two is four. And then we're gonna square the square root of three. And so obviously the square root of three squared just becomes what's underneath the third. So that just becomes three. Simplifying this, we're gonna multiply all the rational parts together. So that's two times two, two times two times negative one gives us a negative four. And then root three times root five gives us the square root of 15. And then we're gonna square this last term here. I should have put a minus there, but anyway. So the square of negative one is one, positive one. And the square of root five is five. Just simplifying this, we get 12, minus four root 15 plus five. Then collecting like terms. So we have 12 plus five is 17 minus four root 15. Okay, so once we've done that, we're gonna have a look at what we need to find. So we need to evaluate A. So A is your constant term. So in this case, your A would be 17. And B is the value that's underneath the third. So if you look here, our third has 15 underneath, underneath the, the square root, but it's also got a four out the front. So what we need to do is we need to move the four underneath the third. So the way in which you do that, I'll do that on the side here. So you got four root 15. So you want to move the four underneath the third. So in order to do that, you just simply square the four and you multiply it by what's underneath the third. So the square of four is 16 times 15. So that gives us the square root of 240. And so we can go back and rewrite this expression as 17 minus the square root of 240. And from there, we can conclude that A has the value of 17 and B has the value of 
240. So just make sure you write that final line. So therefore, A equals 17 and B equals 240. So let's look at this last one over here. So it's very similar to the previous one. So we're going to write this expression and then we're going to simplify it. So we're going to simplify it using the same method. So we're going to square the first term. So 7 root 2 squared. Then we're going to double the product of these two terms. So 7 root 2 times negative 3. And then we're going to square the last term. So the square of 7 is 49. The square of root 2 is 2. Then we're going to multiply these together. So all the rational ones first. So 2 with 7 with negative 3 gives us negative 42. And then root 2 is the only third, so that just is root 2. And then the square of negative 3 is positive 9. And then 49 with 2 gives you 98, minus 42 root 2 plus 9. We're going to collect like terms, so 98 plus 9 gives you 107. And minus 42 root 2, so these cannot be subtracted because they are not like terms. This doesn't have the root 2 that this has, and so we just kind of leave it as it is. We go back to the question, what does the question want? So it wants us to find A, so A is your whole number, which we have here. B is the coefficient of the square root of 2. So this is the coefficient of the square root of 2. So then we can conclude and say, therefore, A equals 107 and B equals negative 42. And that negative is important because there's a positive there. So B has the value of negative 42. And that's how you work with thirds. So just to recap, Addition and subtraction have their rules. So remember, like terms, think about the rules that you apply with algebra. And then multiplication and division have their own rules. So you multiply the rationals together and you multiply the irrationals together, or you divide the rationals together and you divide the irrationals, and there's your answer. Anyway, I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any other questions you want me to answer, also leave them down below. But for now, that's all from me. I'll see you later.